it starts uh, breaking down below this trend line here, right? Excuse me, below this uh, uh, January 29 lows. Look how much room you have. You have room for all this stuff. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, did okay today. Uh, kind of a weird day today. Uh, if you were around, if you were trading today the whole day, you saw around, what was it, around 10.30, 11 o'clock, a really aggressive candle came out of nowhere on the queues. And you, know, you usually don't see such range expansion on the QQQs unless something really, really aggressive is coming out, whether it's good, bad, something for the Fed, something from political, pandemic, whatever the case may be. But we saw this around 11 o'clock, and you know, you had a candle go on the queues from 3.35 all the way down to 3.29. You're talking about a $6 candle very, very aggressively. And it really is a constant reminder, especially with the continuous euphoria that you see in this tape, that at any second, if you are in an over- uh, overbought stock. That's something that's up really aggressively over the last you know several days, several weeks. It could get taken away from you very, very fast. And this was really an eye opener for a lot of people who said, "Well, wait a minute. Well, what's going on here? Was there any news?" And that's the whole point. There doesn't need to be uh, any news when you have a market that's so darn strong. Um, it really doesn't need any piece of factual information or evidence. For the market to go lower. It just does. But, but the true nature of the beast, and this is what we've been talking about for years, a lot of people started talking around and, and started saying, well, that's it. That's the top, right? That's the top. The market's going to go lower. See, the bulls never learned. You know, they shouldn't have gotten greedy. And what I really loved what the bulls did today was they lost the five-day moving average. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast for years and years and years, you kind of know how important the five-day moving average is. Uh, it represents, at least for me, uh, short-term sentiment, and that's very, very important. So the idea that the bulls gave up the five-day moving average in such an aggressive candle very, very quickly, that's kind of a red flag. But what they did was, and they continued to do for the last four, four and a half years, they came back and not only got off the lows, they reclaimed the five-day moving average. So the bulls continued to be really, really aggressive. There's also a flip side to that as well, okay? Um, a lot of names did not recover, okay, from uh, the aggressive channel. So if you look, for example, a stock like Amazon, and again, there's nothing wrong technically with Amazon yet, but it didn't recover. If you look at Apple, right, nothing wrong with it yet. And you can see these channels, how tight they're getting, but at some point you have to turn around and say, look, these stocks better wake up, or the next move, especially some sort of, algorithmic, R2-D2, whatever the case may be, right? Quant model, eventually those ranges they've been holding, holding, holding forever, eventually they're gonna get violated. And that was a very, very important part of today's session. If you look, for example, like a stock like Tesla, this probably gives you the clearest view of what potentially could happen, right? Now, if you guys remember about a week and a half ago, Tesla had its first close below this whole rising support. You guys remember that? And I was sell bias, 100% sell bias on Tesla going to the next trading day. And if you guys remember, Tesla got bailed out. They got a $1,200 price target from, I think it was like Morgan Stanley. And it started this whole big wave of buying and it went into the 480s level and it started kind of putting this roll over top. And today we really saw a big aggressive push to the downside. What saved Tesla today was this rising Bollinger Band, and that was meant to be support, short-term support. It's not a concrete wall for support, but it's support. And we started seeing for the first time in a very, very long time on Tesla, uh, really big, aggressive, uh, short-term put buyers come in. If you've been watching this broadcast uh, for a while now, you kind of know that aggressive uh, 
option, right? The option players, you know, we've been talking about on the long side. When you see, for example, uh, big out of the money near term call buyers, usually good things are going to happen. For example, Zoom and uh, NVIDIA and OGI and, you know, all these different stocks. But that kind of works on the downside as well. And we started seeing them coming in with some pretty decent sized premium. Uh, for Friday's expiration on the five on the 870, 870 weekly puts. Now, why was 870? Because 780 here, right? Excuse me, it's 770 weekly puts. Uh, 780 was the low of January 29th. So I'm watching Tesla tomorrow, and I'm not watching it to the upside. And, and again, I, I get I, I get it. A lot of people are attached to this thing, and they love this thing, and everything about it is great. And I love it too. Okay, I, again, I am you know I am the last person who ever is going to talk bad about Tesla. I love Tesla. I love it long. I love it short. Um, I love the car. I love everything. I love Elon, right? My next baby daddy, right? Elon Musk. But again, common sense tells us that the stock market speaks louder than what we like and what we want. And it's not the market uh, we want. It's the market we have. And, you know, Tesla looks like the cleanest headshot. If it starts uh, breaking down below this trend line here, right? Excuse me, below this... Uh, uh, January 29 lows. Look how much room you have. You have room all the way to 740. So what I was thinking here before the upgrade, well, now I'm thinking it again. So it's very, very important to kind of acknowledge it. If you are a shareholder of NVIDIA, excuse me, on Tesla, and, you know, you're holding it for five years, this doesn't apply to you, okay? You know, just like any, uh, any other stock that has some technical ways that potentially doesn't go higher anymore, it doesn't apply to you. You're going to be okay, right? You're, you're going to be fine. We're talking about from the trading aspects, we trade ranges. Uh, you know, this is not an uh, indictment of what's going to happen to the stock a month from now or a year from now. We're trying to just accumulate as much information as possible in the last several days and make a decision going forward. So, for example, yesterday Tesla had this phenomenal headline, right? And they said, we bought, uh, what was it, $1.5 billion in Bitcoin and blah, 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 and everything's great. You know what? They sold off the news. Again, we're looking for the market that we have, not the market uh, that we want. So I, I'm definitely watching this thing uh, uh, on the short side. However, there's a lot of names that look great on the long side as well. Look at Netflix, right? Netflix is starting to, you know, it got rejected now twice, two days in a row on this linear regression line. And we have to think, you know, if this thing finally wakes up and we started seeing some really, really aggressive uh, call buying today, late day uh, on Tesla. On, I keep on saying Tesla. I keep on getting them, them both confused. On Netflix, they're coming for, you know, they were coming for the 575s. They were coming for the 600s. We saw a, a, a 575 call buyer coming in for June's. But he came in for a $10 million premium. So I, I definitely want to watch Net, uh, Netflix for tomorrow. Facebook looks really good as well. Again, this is two days in a row above the 50-day moving average. It's holding up very, very nicely. If he could just confirm these two channels, maybe this thing goes higher as well. Uh, BYND, right? We talked about it yesterday. I was a little bit disappointed in it today. It took off today. And if it starts confirming, right, look at the 60-minute view. If it starts confirming today's supply, maybe this thing wakes up. So there's definitely plays I like to the long side. There's definitely plays I like to the short side. But I, I want more information. I, I need more data. Sometimes when you're trading and we're getting into levels that, you know, they're very, very aggressive, especially uh, on the macro ETFs. You start thinking, you start collecting, you start maybe taking your foot off the gas just a little bit, just to make sure that you're reading the market the proper way. And if you look at, at today's pivots, it kind of played out that way. The names that we were watching last night on the video, if you guys remember, the common denominator. You had, you know, you had order flow, and the most important part, you have stocks coming off the bottom channel. So we talked about DoorDash yesterday. Um, I, forgot, I forgot what happened in last night's video. Lemonade we talked about last night as well. So the, the, the theme continues. Option order flow, forget about anything that is overextended. We're looking for stocks that are coming out in bottom channels, and when they do and the option flow matches up, usually good things uh, are going to happen. So let's talk about this. Uh, Snow never built on yesterday's move, which was kind of, uh, you know, kind of surprising. Uh, 324 needs to build. It got to 327, but nothing really, really crazy there at all. Uh, DoorDash just absolutely exploded. 192.50, 193 needs to build. Here was DoorDash. Uh, went right to 216. I actually like it m more for tomorrow. If it could confirm... Uh, today's price channel. Look at this move, 27 point move. Uh, looks great. Congratulations to all you guys who caught that as well. Uh, GLSI never came close to confirming. Uh, Lemonade had a nice move. Again, same same thing as Dash, not as, as aggressive, 
but 158 needs to build. Here was uh, Lemonade, LMND, common denominator, right? Coming off the bottom channel, uh, took out 158 and traded nearly to 166. Big move there. Uh, Roku, again, impossible, absolutely impossible to trade. It's just so thin at the open. And it's going to look good on paper, right? Uh, 473 needs to build, right? It looks great on paper. It looks great on paper. Here's a 473. Uh, it went to 479, right? Great call. Then. No, no, you couldn't trade it. It was trading at a dollar and a half, two dollars spread, and again, it put up a five dollar candle at the open. At least for me, there's no way possible any, any type of liquidity to trade that. Uh, Fubu, you know, I caught it for a scalp. Uh, 49 needs to build, and then I realized. Uh, it was being pumped. Uh, you know, it ran up like 50, 60 cents. Uh, nothing. You know, here's the scout. You know, 50, 60 cent move. Nothing there at all. I got stopped out, break even on the balance. Uh, Netflix, again, I still really, really like. Uh, again, congratulations for all you guys who had Zoom, who've been in Zoom. Uh, it put in a perfect move right into the upper Bollinger Band. Uh, traded all the way up to the 440 area. Fantastic move. NVIDIA was the creme de la creme today, not only just from today's action, but from the pivot from two days ago. Uh, fantastic mover from the 560 pivot. I know a lot of you guys have been holding it. And today it broke out above 588. Uh, just exploded. Uh, NVIDIA exploded. You had uh, $600 calls coming in, the weeklies. Uh, and it probably should print 600 tomorrow. So a really, really big move on the video as well. Uh, here comes 205 on DoorDash. It went to 215, 216 as well. Yeah, I like Tesla. You know, I like Tesla. They're coming for, you know, they're coming for the lows. Uh, they're coming for uh, the puts. We'll see how this plays out. The most important thing, guys, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, don't look at the market as a casino. It's not a casino. And unfortunately, we're still seeing so much aggressive retail buying, chasing stocks at all levels. Like there's there's no Fs given. There's no Fs given at all on the, the amount of effort that people will put themselves in a position of a firing squad. There's nothing. I'm seeing people buying stocks that have gone from three to 27 and talking about this thing's going to 100. Whoa, okay. That's a casino, right? That's a casino. Predicting where you think your stock is going to go. They just went from 1 to 27. It's not trading. And unfortunately, there has to be a really fine line. And I think when people talk about trading for a living and doing this for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, there has to be kind of a line drawn between somebody who really buys stocks and wants to gamble with their you know, discretionary money, or somebody that sits there every single day, prepares for two, three hours a day, makes sure their money is safe before anything else, and really takes this job very, very seriously, because it is a job. So I, I personally think there's much easier ways um, to make money than just buying stocks randomly. The NBA has, what, eight, nine games tonight, 12 games tonight, right? Bet the money line, so much easier. And, it, and you won't sit there uh, you won't sit there agonizing over every single, you know, every single possession. Your money's on the line. You know your max bet, and you, you know, you're good to go. So, unfortunately, you know, there there is so many new cases and new um, new openings for this euphoric market that, unfortunately, people are finding out the hard way that you know it's not a casino. It's not gambling. It's, it takes a lot of work. It takes many years, and it's going to take you, you know, ten to twelve years just to feel comfortable in your own skin. And unfortunately, you're not going to get that if you are chasing a stock from 1 you know, to 27. So anyway, guys, have a great night, everybody. Stay blessed. Please do your research. If you are serious about this as a career from any type of, uh, from any type of position of strength, you have to treat this job as any other job. Work at it. Perfect it. And be the best version of you you can possibly get. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.